morning, people of God. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yes, yes. The Lord has given us another day to praise his holy name. Amen. Yes, yes. In his gates with praise yes. and thanksgiving. Yes, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Bless his name. This morning, we'd like to first of all say welcome to each and every one that came out to pray for us today, worship with us today. Thanks to all of you all that's uh, on Facebook Live. Thanks to each and every one that's on the phone lines. Thanks to each and every one that's here. We love you all. Be safe, be careful. There's a lot going on in this world. But I know that we serve a God that's bigger than all of that. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to uh, start service this morning with a hymn that I'm sure you all know. Uh, Walk with me. Amen? Amen. Walk with me.
dollars and on your gifts. And if you go to if you go over to 13, fear the Lord your God. Serve him only and take your oaths in his name. Mm -hmm. Do not follow other gods, yes. the gods of people around you. Yes. Amen? Amen? God's word for God's people, and his word has already been blessed. Amen? Amen. Uh, this morning we're going to call on our very own Deacon Frolinger. Uh, we call him Buck Cup Time today. But Deacon Bush Frolinger, if you would, take us to the throne of grace, after which the praise team will bless you with two <coughs> songs, and then we'll hear what thus says the Lord Amen. by our very own Reverend Jeffrey Cook. Yes. Amen? Yes. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We want to thank you again, God, for allowing us to see another day. Thank you. God, I want to thank you for us lying down last night and our waking up this morning. Yes. God, and I pray that you continue to bless us all. Yes. Forgive us all for our sin, God. Yes. Yes. Lord, you know all our sins and mm -hmm. will help us do it. Yes. God, I pray that you bless this church. Yes. Bless it in a mighty way, God. Yes. Yes. Bless all the members of this church. Yes. Bless each heart, each soul. Yes. God, and I pray that you bring, bless the pastor that's going to bring the word this morning. Yes. Yes. God, I pray that you bless the praise team, God, that's going to sing the songs of Zion. Yes. 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 Help us, God, to uplift your name today, God. Yes. Lord, I pray to God yes. that you will go by the rest homes. Yes. All the Hospice, God. Yes. Just touch the ones today, God, with a finger of God. Mm -hmm. Pray that you bless this world today, God. Yes. Yes. Word, God. Yes. Help us, God, just to get through them, God. And, and, and all this turmoil that's going on, God. Yes. You can handle it. I know you've got all the power in your hands. Yes, yes Lord. All right. Now I pray to God you just continue to bless me. Yes. Help me, God, just to do what you would have me to do and yes. be, God. Yes. And this is all the precious man we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.
one. Children of God. No matter where you've been. If you're his, you're part of the family. And you're one of his. And you're one of ours. First, I'd like to say, let us keep our pastor, lift him up in prayer. During this time right now, he's having a few health issues. But as always, he's with us in spirit. So he may not be present with us right here. Also, let's keep Sister Covington in our prayers, our elders, the mothers, deacons, trustees, and each other and our families. Let's continue to pray for one another and lift us up. Let us keep our city, state, local, and national government in our prayers. Amen. But these are trying times right now. Things are happening that have never happened before. And we sure need prayer right now. Let us continue to pray for everyone around the world. Let us pray for the protection of all. And that everyone shall get to hear about the wonderful love that our Lord and God, our Savior, has to offer. And let us remember to treat each and every one with a pure heart, a loving heart, showing kindness and mercy to one another. But it is his will that we shall do that. And let's not forget, let's thank these wonderful musicians that we have here. They do a wonderful job, a wonderful job. They do it because they love the Lord. Amen. Let's also thank the praise team Amen. for those wonderful songs that they gave. Yes, yes. Reverend Turner once told me that he can't sing, he just talked. <laughs> he won't tell me to do it. He was singing today, y'all. And I want to thank our pastor for this opportunity stand before you once again mm -hmm. yeah. not under these circumstances but yet I still thank him yeah. so if y'all will give me the moment and let me pray before I begin gracious father Oh, heavenly and wise God. For you are the great I am. Our Savior. Our Keeper. Our Love. Our Salvation and our Rock. There is nothing, Lord, that we need or could ever ask for that you are not. That is why you said you are the great I am. You are everything. And we thank you. Father, we come together as one body. Pray for each and every minister, pastor, preacher, teacher out there today that is passing forth your word. We pray, Father, that as I myself, we ask that you humble us, use us. Let our spirit decrease, that your spirit might increase within us that what you have given us, that what we have studied, that we have heard you say, that we give to your people this day, that it will be a blessing unto the ears that hear and to the hearts that shall receive it. That it shall go forth, Lord, and do what it was intended to do this day. For there is a word for everyone, saved and unsaved, that you have for us, and we thank you. We give you all honor, Amen. all glory, Amen. and all praise. Amen. In Christ's name, Amen. 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 If y'all could uh, meet me in the book of Mark for just a moment. I don't plan on being before you long. 
we're going to go to chapter 10. And we're going to begin reading at verse 17. And I believe we're going to stop at verse 21. Now I'll give everyone a moment. And if we could stand for the reading of the word to give honor where honor is due. Amen. Does everyone have it? Amen. I'll be reading out of the NIV this morning. And it reads, As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Mm -hmm. Christ in response said, Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. Mm -hmm. No one is good except God alone. Mm -hmm. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You shall not be fraud. Honor your mother and father. Mm -hmm. Teacher, he declared, all these things I have kept since the boy. Jesus looked at him and loved him. And he said, one thing you lack, he said, mm -hmm. go and sell everything you have and give to the poor. Mm -hmm. And you will have treasures in heaven. Mm -hmm. Then come and follow me. All right. That is our scriptures for today. And if I may, which he changed this up on me this morning. As a topic, how are you living? Today's sermon is a sermon that he gave for us to examine ourselves. Which we need to do that on occasion. To sit back, listen, and just think about how are we live in our lives. Mm -hmm. Are we living our lives according to his word? Yeah. Or are we living our lives according to how we want to live? Yeah. Are we straddling the fence? Mm. Are we lukewarm? All right, man. Where is he in our lives? In 1597, Sir Francis Bacon made a statement. He said, knowledge is power. Knowledge is not power. Knowledge is only information that you obtain. Without putting that knowledge to use, it is useless. Once it is put to use, it is called wisdom. That is your power. In these scriptures, we see that the rich man came before Christ and he humbled himself. And he was seeking knowledge. The knowledge of how to inherit eternal life. And if we notice in Jesus' response, he didn't ask him the question, did he know the commandments? He said, you know them. There's a statement. He didn't ask him, how do I be saved? He said, how do I obtain the kingdom? Do I inherit the kingdom? So-so means to be saved, mm -hmm. which only means to be delivered. Mm -hmm. Being delivered does not get you into heaven. Like Being delivered only gives you an opportunity that you can live according to the commandments mm -hmm. and do what is right. Mm -hmm. Because if we live long enough, we may not do that sin again, but we're going to do another one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when Jesus made the statement, you know the commandments, 
We all know there's ten commandments. Yep. He only says six. Thou shalt not murder. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not give false testimony. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not be fraud. Mm -hmm. And honor thy mother and thy father. Amen. In 1 Corinthians, we have a list of who will not inherit the kingdom. Those that are unrighteous, fornicators, adulterers, idolaters, homosexuals, sodomizers, thieves, covers, drunks, revelers, and extortioners. Those are the ones that will not inherit. See, when we gave our lives to Christ mm -hmm. and believed in Him, that God raised Christ from the dead, from the dead and confessed our sins, right. and we shall be saved, He delivered us from unrighteousness. And at that very moment, we had a fresh start. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is why it says that we are new creatures in Christ. And there are those of us, when we gave ourselves to Christ, mm -hmm. we didn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. We walked right out the door yep. after we did it mm -hmm. and sinned again. Yep. Therefore, you lost the king mm -hmm. because you sinned. Mm -hmm. You have to repent. But we didn't have the knowledge at the time that we gave our life to Christ of repenting, of living a righteous life, of doing what is good. We only knew what we heard. We received no revelation. And we didn't put it into action because we were living as we wanted to live. But now that we have given our life to Christ, we have to change the way that we live. We have to examine ourselves periodically and see if we're still following the commands. Mm -hmm. Everything that we've done before we gave our life to Christ, mm -hmm. he washed it away. Yeah. He threw it into the sea of forgiveness and said that he would never bring it up again. Mm -hmm. okay. Not like us. You do something to us, make us mad. Mm -hmm. We're going to tell you what you did last week. Right now. Last month. But he doesn't do that to us. Amen. Amen. He doesn't do it to us. When he say that he cast in the seal of forgiveness, mm -hmm. he doesn't remember. That's uh -huh. called forgiveness. Uh -huh. And forgive. Okay. We need to make it to that point. Mm -hmm. Are we there yet? Right. I'm not. Uh -huh. You make me mad and I hold on to it. You can even ask me to forgive you. And I'll say I forgive you, but I ain't forgot. Mm -hmm. And in my heart, I'm still holding on to it until I get over it. Mm -hmm. Then I let it go. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean to say six months down the road, when you piss me off again, I'm not going to bring it up. Mm -hmm. So that means I haven't reached where I need to be. Mm -hmm. See, Christ said that he didn't come to destroy the law. That he came to fulfill the law. Yeah. That means we're still obligated to abide in those commands. Mm -hmm. We're not under law, but we're under grace. Which allows us to repent and be forgiven. Yeah. So we still have to follow those commands. And grace gives us the opportunity to receive mercy and love unto forgiveness and repentance. And we need to show that same mercy to one another. Mm -hmm. For who are we if we can't do what God asks us to do when he puts himself in us to do the things that he asks us to do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those that will inherit the kingdom 
are those that will do God's will. Those that are born of water and of spirit. Those that come to him like a child. Before in spirit. Those that are persecuted for his name's sake. And the meek. So we have to remain humble. Yes. Continue to abide in him. That he will abide in us. <clears throat> that he will guide us. For it says the footsteps of the righteous are guided by the Lord. When the man came to Christ, he expressed to him that he kept those six commandments. But if you notice, Jesus only asked six. And Jesus loved him for keeping those six. But Jesus also knew what the man's heart was. And the first commandment that we have is thou shalt have no other God before me. That is why Jesus knew that this man did not keep it because he was wealthy. And it just so happened his wealth was money. Wealth is not limited to money. We, as we call ourselves children of God, have placed God before God. Anything we have put before Him, we have made a God in our life. Yep. And we have sinned against the first commandment. So when Jesus told the man to sell everything he had, mm -hmm. it wasn't a literal, a literal statement. It was a statement to show the man his own heart. Which is what God does to us when we do the very same thing. When we put things before God, he lets us know that we have put things before him. And he's not asking us to give it away. He wants us to have things. But what he's doing is asking us to put him first. We've all done it, and we all have one, or have had one. Whether it's your spouse, your boyfriend or girlfriend, your money, your job, your kids, your house, materialistic things, or your selfish desires. We've all done it. We've all sought out things and put God on the back burner and put it before Him. But the Word says to seek Him first the kingdom of heaven, and all these things shall be added. So he's not trying to take those things away. He just wants us to put it first yes. so that he can give us those things when we are able to handle those things. Right. We're not always able to handle what we want when we want it. But if we don't see him and we go get it, and then we find ourselves in a mess, we wonder why we end the mess. Then we seek him to get us out of the mess. But if we did what we, we if we have done what we should have done in the first place, we would have been in a mess. We would have had what we needed. He would have prepared us for what he was going to give us. Because mm -hmm. he's not going to keep no good thing from you. See, Luke it says, but the treasures of a good man's heart comes from good things. Yes. And see, first we need to desire, we need to deny, can't talk this morning, deny ourselves and put away our selfish desires. And once we put away our selfish desires, we can seek him wholeheartedly. He will show us, he will tell us, yes. and he will guide us. David said in the Psalms, if we delight ourselves in him, he will give us the desires of our heart. That's what we need to do. To seek God first. 
And he will give us what we need. But first, we have to deny ourselves and carry our cross. Paul said he does it daily. And I gotta tell you, I get tired of fighting. I do it daily. And daily, I give up. But we are under grace and mercy, which allows me the opportunity to repent, get back up, and he puts me right back in line where I was, and he doesn't chastise me. He says, let's try it again. And he knows whether I'm going to pass this time or not. And when I don't pass, he does the same thing over again. A wise man once told me, you never fail until you quit trying. Amen. Once you quit trying, you fail. Mm -hmm. But as long as you try, yeah. you will succeed. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do daily. And continuously repent. All day. Mm -hmm. I repent when I wake up. Because ain't no telling what I was thinking while I was asleep. <laughs> hey, <man. laughs> hey, so we have to sit back and look at ourselves. Examine who we are. Yeah. And once we do that and seek him, he'll give us it all. He said he wants us to be prosperous. Yeah. He wants us to multiply. But we have to do what he asks us to do. Mm -hmm. It's not do what you want and he'll give you what you want. Mm -hmm. Which is how we think it should work. And we sometimes wonder why pews, the pews are empty. Mm -hmm. It's not because of the virus that's going on. Mm -hmm. It's because we're not living our lives the way we're supposed to live our lives. Mm -hmm. People don't look at Christians the way they used to look at Christians. Mm -hmm. Christians aren't doing like Christians used to do. Yeah. When you see somebody that claims to be a Christian, and you in Walmart and they're cussing somebody out. <laughs> you ask yourself, why do I need to go to church? I can do that on my own. Well, well. Or if you're riding down the road and you're cutting somebody off, giving them the middle finger because they got in your way. Mm -hmm. You're not living a Christ-like life. Yeah. We tend to do things that we shouldn't do but then we try and justify ourselves and say that we're Christians. Mm -hmm. But we lack the knowing of the meaning of the word. To be a Christian means you're a follower of Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That means we have to lead by example. Mm -hmm. And those were not examples of examples that we need to lead. Mm -hmm. The world sees us doing what they do Monday through Sunday, doing it Monday through Saturday. The only difference is we get up and we come to church on Sunday, take a shower with them, we washed off everything we did Monday through Saturday. And they still at home in bed doing whatever they're going to do. And we haven't done anything. We need to examine ourselves mm -hmm. and let people see that we are really Christians. That we are walking in those commandments. That we are putting God first. Yeah. And that he sees us as righteous in his eyes. Then other people should see us as righteous in their eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And once we begin to walk as true Christians, as two true disciples of Christ, people will wonder, how can you do that? How is it you know your life is going to get cut off tomorrow? And you got a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. And we are freely to say, because we know God's got it. Mm -hmm. And then when tomorrow comes, and your life is still on, and they ask you, when did your life get cut back on? You can tell them, God had it. They still own it. That's all right. Yeah. All right. He's going to take care of us. But we still got to do what he asked us to do. Yeah. We just can't live our lives any kind of way. Amen. 
He said that he'll spew those out that are lukewarm. So let us get on fire. Paul told Timothy to fan into flame. Let us do the same. We come to church every Sunday. And for those that take the Bible out of your car when you leave church on Sunday, mm -hmm. and you read and you study, turn on YouTube and listen to a sermon, you're being fed the Word. Yeah. But are you actually eating the Word? Are you just hearing the word and not listening? Are you taking it in? Are you letting it work in your life? Once you hear the word, you're held accountable for that word. Whether you do it or not, you are held accountable. So now that you've attained that knowledge, we have to put it into action. And that action is called wisdom. That's what our elders, our mothers, grandmothers, grandfathers, grandfathers, grandfathers passed down to us. Their wisdom. Yeah. They didn't obtain it just by looking at somebody, standing around, doing nothing. They gained it by putting into action what was passed down to them. Mm -hmm. And they passed it down to us. And over the years, we've turned into selfish individuals that we don't want to do the things that are right. We just want to do the things that make us feel good. Mm. You see, Christ said that no greater works, excuse me, greater works we shall do than he. What greater works are we doing? Mm. I haven't raised anybody from the dead. be nice if I had the ability with his spirit in me to be able to do that. But I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. And we should strive, all of us, mm -hmm. to get to that point yeah. to where we can do the greater works. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but knowledge is useless if it's not used. Mm -hmm. And that's what this man wanted. He wanted the knowledge but he didn't want to put it into practice. Mm -hmm. He wanted it just like his money. Go give it and receive what he wants and he's got it. But dealing with God doesn't work that way. He gives us the knowledge. And we have to put it into works. Mm -hmm. And once we put it into works, it works in our lives. It moves in our lives. Mm -hmm. It causes us to change. That's why in Romans it says, renew your mind. Yeah. If your mind stays the same, you stay the same. You have to renew your mind. Mm -hmm. If your mind is renewed, your heart is renewed. Yeah. Yeah. And once your heart is renewed, you'll begin to change on the outside. Mm -hmm. So let us take to heart Everything that we gain from Christ, from our pastor, let us take it and put it into action. Sit down, give him five minutes and ask him, ask the Lord to show you where you need to work on your life at. He'll show you. It might not be right then, but he's going to show you where in your life you need to work. Then he's going to start working on that part of your life. Yeah. Then we have to move when he moves. And when he says that we need to do this, we need to do it then. Don't hesitate. Because once you hesitate, you begin to doubt. Once you begin to doubt, you begin to wonder. Once you begin to wonder, you don't do it. Mm -hmm. Do it. Yeah. Just follow it. He's not going to leave you astray. So I'll leave you with this. It's time for us to get it together. Every day is closer to the end. Whether you believe it or not. 
when I first got saved, they said, the time is near, the time is near. Six months went by, I'm like, well, when is it coming? <laughs> you keep saying it's near, and when you tell me something is near, I think it's close. But none did I realize. No one knows when it's coming. But every day is a day closer. And we do not know when that time is coming. So let us begin to work and live as Christ would have us to live. For he said if we abide in him, he will abide in us. So let us live the life that he desires us to live. We will still get the things that we desire to have. It may not be when we want it, but it'll be when we need it. For it's like the elders would say, he's an on-time God. Yeah. He's always there when you need him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So let us keep that in mind. To continue to see him first. Turn our hearts towards him. Let us look for him and he will find us as we find him. Yes. For in his word he said, when you seek me, you will find me yes. with your whole heart. Yes. Not a partial heart. Your whole heart has to seek him, to find him. And when you find him, he's got your answer. He's got your back. He's got your front. He said that he will go before you and fight your battles. So anything he asks you to do, he's already put it in you to do it. Yeah. He's already given you the ability. Yeah. But do we have the faith to stand strong? and walk in what he says that he has done. For the psalmist said, when you've done all that you could do, still stand. And I know it's hard. It's very hard at times. That's why I've had situations where I didn't succeed. But as I said, I did not fail because I'm still trying to strive. And I know one day I will make it. And you will too. So I ask you, is there anyone that wants to know God? That wants to know Him better? That want Him in your life to guide you and to lead you. That he will keep you safe. He will be your rock. He will be your refuge. He will give you the desires of your heart. But give him yours first. All you have to do is confess your sins. Believe that God raised Christ from the dead. You don't have to be here. You don't have to be in front of a pastor. You can be at your own home, laying in the bed, on your knees, riding in your car. All you have to do is say, Lord, come into my life. For I am a sinner, and I need you. I want to change. I want to live as you have me to live, to do what you would have me to do. And he will give you a better life. He will show you the right way to go. How to treat people. How to love unconditionally. He's waiting. He's always there with open arms. And if you give your life to him today, his angels are rejoicing that you have come to him. He'll love you unconditionally. Father God, I thank you. 
I thank you for those out there, Father, that gave their life to you. The Lord, they need you just as we need you. I pray, Father, that you will send ministering angels unto them now. Wipe their tears. Pick them up. Stand them on solid ground. Father, their hearts are aching. And you can mend it. Just as you've mended ours. Time and time again. We ask you, Father, to touch us. Revive us, Lord. For we all need your intervention. We need you, Lord, to come into our hearts once again. Purify us, Lord, from all sin and unrighteousness. From any thought, Lord, that we try to exalt above thee. From anything, Lord, that we should not have thought and we thought. Lord, we know that what is in the heart is what a man is. That's his character. We ask you, Father, to change our character. Let our character be, Lord, be that of you. That those, Lord, that are out in this world will see you through us. They won't see Jeff, John, Bill, and Jane. They will see Christ. And they will see the love that you have. And they will desire that love. They will see the things, Lord, that you do. And how you keep us. They will desire that as well. Father, renew our mind. Renew us with the right spirit. Give us, Lord, everything we need to be better. For each and every day is another opportunity, Lord, to get it right. And we ask you, God, help us to get it right. We know that we're not perfect. We know that you are perfect. We know that if, you abide, if we abide in you, you are innocent with us to give us what we need. Help us to stand, Lord, on your word. That when troubles come, your word will prevail. But your word said that your word is strong enough to cut down into the bones and marrow. Therefore, there is nothing, Lord, that's strong in your word. For it is powerful. Like a double-edged sword. We thank you, Lord. Father, we ask you to help us to put you first in our lives. To put ourselves behind. To carry our cross every day. And to deny ourselves. That we shall love you wholeheartedly, Lord. With all our hearts, our minds, and our soul. And we thank you. Lord, we give you the highest praise. We say hallelujah, Lord. Glory and hallelujah to your name, Lord. For we know that you are, Lord, all in all. There's nothing, Lord, that you cannot do. And we thank you. Father, we ask you to continue being within us, doing within us. Letting it be seen that you're in us. And we thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. As this service comes to an end, I pray, I ask God be with each and every one of us as we stand and walk out the door as we go throughout the week 
for there are things that have been said that are going to happen this week. And Lord, we know that you're our protection. And we ask you to protect us, Lord. We ask you to bless us throughout the week. And let us bless others. May the peace of God, the love of the Holy Spirit, touch each and every one and be our God as we go forth this day. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.